Archage 2 is coming. Those are words that I guarantee you guys were not expecting to hear today. I have gotten so many DMs over social media and Discord today asking me to cover the newly announced Archage 2 that's currently in development. So many that I actually felt the need to go ahead to research, write up, record, and edit another video only several hours after publishing the one I did earlier today. Yeah, a busy sticks I am today. Now, this announcement was covered by a variety of different websites. We had the official recruitment notice itself. We had MMO culture. We had massively OP, Sauramonin's website. So credit to each and every single news outlet that went ahead and reported on this. But this is, I guess, my interpretation of the information and my coverage of the information that I managed to go through. So it turns out that after years of Arcage running quite unsuccessfully, even though it is arguably one of the better MMORPGs at its core, Exile Games and Kakao Games have decided that with their new partnership, they are going to expand the Arcage universe by developing a brand new title in the franchise Arcage 2. This news came from the Korean news website RulyWeb that went on to report quite a bit of information. According to the article, Arcage 2 is going to be a PC MMORPG, where games like Terra, Blade and Soul, Blast, Lineage, and other South Korean PC MMOs have all made mobile sequels and mobile spin-offs. It turns out that Kakao and Exile Games are still interested in dominating the PC market. Arcage Arcage 2 is also being developed on Unreal Engine 5. Yeah, there is no Unreal Engine 3 garbage being made here like Elyon, and apparently also no Unreal Engine 4. The game even has, as of right now, more than 50 different developers participating in the development of the game, and they are actively hiring on additional developers to continue expanding their team. Jake Song, the very man who brought the Lineage and Arcage franchises to life, went on to state that the game is going to retain its large sandbox style world, the unique freedom that Arcage presented its players and will try to bridge the MMO scene together in a game that looks to be a cross between Lineage and WoW. And honestly, that is a ridiculously ambitious goal to have. Now, I know that some of you guys might not believe that WoW is as good now as it once was, and obviously, as is evident by the player base and the subreddit and the forums and Twitter, literally social media everywhere, Arcage is definitely nowhere near being remotely as good as it once was either. This is nevertheless a very ambitious goal to work towards making a game that is as good, if not better, than both of them combined. Exile Games and Kakao are hoping for Arcage 2 to be the largest next-generation AAA MMORPG. Although, naturally, there's no release date planned for the game, so technically it could be the next large AAA MMORPG of 2025. Jake Song, who is taking on the role of CEO of Arcage 2 development, went on to state that the original incarnation of the MMO came out seven years ago. He then further elaborated on how Arcage was especially popular outside side of South Korea, and specifically in North America and Europe, and as such, it looks like he's taking that knowledge and implementing things he learned within its sequel. Does this mean that Arcage 2 is actually going to be targeting a Western audience? We have definitely had our fair share of South Korean MMOs over the years, and there is one thing we should all be able to agree on here, and that is that they are all huge cash cows. They all look beautiful. Like, I'm not gonna lie, they are some of the most gorgeous MMOs I have ever seen. But I don't know, to me, they lack the the soul or the depth of an MMO that could potentially go ahead and last beyond a year after its initial release. Apparently, more than half of the total cumulative sales for Arcage and probably Arcage Unchained as well, came from overseas. This is proof that Western players were much more receptive of the game than players within South Korea. Arcage was an incredibly well done MMO. It had the makings of a fantastic game that could have taken the market by storm. However, with its restrictions, its focus on paid cash shop items, and its overabundance of pay to win, the game died off relatively quickly. Years later, the Arcage team released Arcage Unchained, a buy to play version of Arcage without the pay to win trash that had been so prevalent in the game up until that point. And while it was definitely much better received by players, they soon learned that the game was still the same Arcage game that they'd grown to dislike, just without the pay to win. The large sandbox world they'd come to love over the years had been changed so drastically and was mere a shell of its former self, so players stopped playing once again. Even more followed after GameGo went back on their word, claiming all subsequent content would be free if you'd purchased the game by making future updates like the Garden of the Gods a paid content update. The greed from both developers and publishers has led many a player to having a very strong distaste for the game, and that makes perfect sense and is completely justified. How Exile Games and Kakao are actually going to handle this is completely up for discussion, but if you guys aren't aware, Kakao are the very same people behind Black Desert Online. Arcage 2 
2 is going to be an MMORPG that is somewhere between a sandbox arcade game and a sandbox Black Desert game. Both were admittedly very heavily pay to win, and both are good games at their cores, in their respective niches anyway. Now, I'm not really entirely certain if this is something that we should necessarily be excited for. Like, it is going to be a AAA budget MMORPG, so in the grand scheme of things, yeah, that's kind of reassuring. And it is being done by developers that have proven they are actually capable of creating a game that is worth playing, as opposed to, I don't know, like indie developers that just continue to either push back and delay their games or release something that absolutely nobody wanted. But if we are going to end up with a business model that is anything like Black Desert Online or Arc Ages, then I feel like we should probably steer clear. That isn't to say that it will be, it is just to say that it's definitely a possibility. Considering Arc Age Unchained was buy to play and Black Desert is buy to play, I wonder what the business model for Arc Age 2 will actually end up being. You can bet there'll be incredibly expensive founders packs available, but will this be a free or paid MMO? What do you guys think? And what type of combat will they employ? We have so many questions and I look forward to having them answered over time. Currently, once again, there is no expected release date for Arc Age 2. We don't even know if Arc Age 2 is going to be its official name, but considering the development on Arc Age 2 has just begun, I would not expect it any sooner than 22 or 23 at its earliest. It really depends on the type of game they're aiming for and how dedicated they are to bringing their vision to life. But this is my opinion, my impressions of the upcoming MMORPG. What do you guys think though? You think this is going to be another pay to win piece of trash like the Arc Age game ended up being, like Black Desert might potentially be? Let me know down in the comments below and let's talk about it. Anyway guys, that is it for me. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you all next time. Peace.